Well, good morning. It's Thursday morning and I am Gordon Hickson. It's been such a privilege to be with you this week and just to talk about activating that leader within you. Because on Monday we looked at what is this kingdom leadership. On Tuesday we looked at how do we train and disciple that kind of kingdom leader. And then yesterday we looked at that journey of developing this kind of leadership. Remember, I gave you the acronym of HARD. You know, we have to go through those times of hardship, endure hardship as discipline. Then agro and R for revelation. Remember, it's during those desperate times we get revelation that really changes us. And then that horrible word D for delays. Yeah, we hate delays, but those they do test our ways. So today we're going to be looking at how do we create this Jesus culture? How do we create the kingdom values that actually form this kind of leadership and awaken the leader within you? You know, what I've come to realise is that the core of our kingdom, kingdom culture is our value system. It's what we honour and value. What we honour and value, that's what is imparted to other people. And so you see, values are dealing with our heart. And discipleship is all about this change of heart. And so our hearts and our values are shaped largely through God's word. Yes, it's with people, other people. But we cannot ignore the power of God's word. Jesus is the word. And we've got to, if we're going to have Jesus culture, we've got to bring our lives in alignment to God's word, Jesus now you see, this is the seed that we have to sow into ourselves and into people, trusting that that seed is going to become viral, it's going to be activated within them. Now, the most important parable in the Bible is the parable of the sower. Why? Because every other parable actually hangs on this one parable, because it shows us the state of our heart. Remember, there are four states of the heart. Remember, first of all, the closed and hardened of the path. That speaks to people who are wounded. The hearts are callous. There's an impenetrable thing. And you know, when you're dealing with things like that, if you're, if you're wounded and callous, you'll find when the word comes, it just bounces off. The seed just doesn't grow. So we cannot afford to stay wounded and calloused in our hearts. Secondly, there's people who are wide open, but they stay wounded. We cannot, if we're a leader, we, have, we cannot be a wounded leader. We have to get healed. You see, if you stay wounded when trouble and persecution comes, that's going to rob all the seed inside you. You just can't afford it. You cannot stay as a wounded leader. Then thirdly, the soil of being open but cluttered. And so many leaders end up like this. It's very easy to be wide open, but your life is so cluttered by worries, anxiety, leisure, pleasure, you know, all the, the, the wealth and all the stuff like that. Those things can so clutter up your life that the seed, this dynamic heavenly virus, this sperm of the seed of God, just doesn't get activated inside. So we've got to have the fourth soul, which is open but also prepared. Remember Rachel talked about the preparation of that soil? Remember we've got to prepare it, got to bring out the stones and... Just get it ready so the heart's ready to receive that word of God. That is the type of heart we've got to have. And that type of heart receives the word, it understands it, it then plants the womb, the word in that womb of our spirit, and then it holds on to it, perseveres, and finally it gives birth to that word, and the word becomes flesh. Now the truth is that both God and Satan can sow into our lives. We've got to be very careful. And it says in Proverbs 4.23 that one of the most important things, it says above everything else, guard your heart because this is the wellspring of your life. You know, if you're going to activate the leader within you, you've got to look at the wellspring. You've got to look at this part of you because if that is blocked up, the leader will, will not function. So you've got to make sure that you do not allow the enemy's seed to be put into and stones to be put into that well that blocks you up. Now Jesus then throughout uh, his talks he unpacks the values of the kingdom by telling them more stories, more parables. So he says that look 
if you are going to recognize the kingdom, then you need to realize that the kingdom's going to grow. Even if it seems small, it's just going to grow. And you've got to realize that it will attract, it will influence, it will gather, it will protect. And he says, come on, you've got to realize that this is all about developing Jesus' culture. This is going to be powerful. It will spread virally and it will permeate everything. So, you see, Jesus in all of the stories, the parables, he's unpacking. This is what Jesus' culture is about. You just read through them. Then even the Sermon on the Mount, just read through these core values. You see, because the kingdom is so valuable, Jesus says, it's hidden. Now that's strange. You've got to search for it with all of your heart. That's Jeremiah 29 verse 13. This doesn't just come. If God is going to awaken the leadership leader in you, come on, this takes such, it takes real intentional searching in the word of God. I find it strange that you can just receive mercy, you can just receive salvation, but the Bible, my Bible says you've got to actually find grace and you've got to find this kingdom. That's Hebrews 4.16. You've got to find the grace. You've got to find the kingdom. It doesn't just appear. As you get into that desperation, God reveals it to you and you begin to start thinking, wow, that's amazing. Now, one of the things... I've learned that activates this seed is the sacrifice of faith. Nasty word, but sacrifice, it's laying our lives down. And faith is a sacrifice. You see, faith to me is that simple act of the germination of the seed, or the Bible says the sperma, Greek sperma, the seed of the word of God in the womb of my spirit. It's activated. Faith is the germination of that sperma in the womb of my spirit. It's activated and suddenly it begins to grow. In other terms, if faith is gambling my all, that's the sacrifice, on the faithfulness of God. Faith is total commitment. There's no half and half. It's all or nothing. You just give yourself to that word. You see, it's the willingness to give up everything for him. That is a key in leadership. The willingness to give up everything for him, for his kingdom, for his service. You see, the father sacrificed his son, it says in Romans 8, 32. He's sacrificed his son, and so he's willing with him to give you everything else. There's nothing, nothing, nothing that will be held from, withheld from you. Then the Holy Spirit, he sacrifices. He pours out, sets himself apart exclusively sets himself apart for us, then you get dear Jesus, who sacrificed himself, and he poured out everything on that cross. All of his life he poured out for us. Now, surely our response has got to be that we're willing to sacrifice, this sacrifice of faith to activate the work of the Spirit and the kingdom within us. Now, history and destiny is decided by our response to this kingdom. I'll repeat that. History and destiny is decided by our response, by your response to this kingdom, to this Jesus culture. We're either in or we're out. There's no middle ground. And you see, leaders are simply defining what is valuable to them. And as we keep on emphasizing these values, they create a new kingdom or Jesus culture. Now, what do I want you to see is Jesus said, I am the vine. But what does that make us? We're the branches producing the fruit. You see, but when we go through pressure, the hardship, what comes out of us? The new wine. And you see, our culture is the new wine. I want you to see that. The culture, the Jesus culture, is the new wine that's pouring out of your life. It is the impartation that's flowing from your life. Now, the structures all around you. That is the wineskin. Yes, it's got to be a new wineskin. It's got to be flexible. It's got to, got to be organic. It's got to grow with a new wine that you've got to feel your feeling pouring out of your life. You can't live in an old wineskin. You've got to allow the new to form. So the culture is that wine. Then secondly, the culture is the power. 
there is a resident the Holy Spirit within you you know Christ within me is the hope of glory it's that resident Holy Spirit the power of Christ within me that is the power that is the culture the structures are all the cables that are used to carry it but culture takes time hear me culture takes time leadership doesn't just happen overnight as we are awakening this leader within us it takes time programs they're just instant but developing this new kingdom or Jesus culture is going to take time but it's worth it so please don't just look for more courses yes courses are great Bible schools are great but look primarily for a life to follow look for that life to follow yes learn principles from people go on courses but primarily you will learn as you follow other people remember Matthew 6 21 it says where your treasure is that's where your heart will be also and out of the overflow of your heart your mouth will speak so if we live our values and we speak our values they get infectious they get contagious as we're living and speaking it, the people around us will catch it. And if you're in that environment with a person who's doing that, you will catch what's on them. That's what I picked up from Rana Bonga. That's what I picked up from Alan Vincent, Rachel's dad. It changed my life and many other leaders too. So what does God value? Let me try and come to a close in this. What does God value? Five very significant things. Yes, he values many things, but I boil it down to these. He values covenant commitment. You see, the, we see this in the Bible, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Bible's all about covenant. He values that covenant commitment. Secondly, he values Christ-like character. Why? Because that is because once we have Christ-like character, that mirror is able to reflect to the whole world, to where the family, the business, community, wherever you are, it reflects who Christ is, who God is. Then thirdly, we, God values contagious culture. Why? Because this makes God's love go viral. You cannot afford to be sterile as a Christian. You have to get to a place where there's a, a contagious culture in you. He values contagious culture. Fourthly, he values compassionate care. Why? Because care is the medium of God's love. We have got to care in the family, in the community, in the church. Care's got to pour out of you. And for, fifthly, he then values constant communion. This is absolutely essential. In the end, it's all about our relationship. A relationship totally bonded to him and our relationship totally bonded to people. No facades. What you see is what you get. We just flow with people. So structure will follow that culture. So our culture has to shift from just evangelizing to making reproducible, contagious disciples. From just teaching to really living it and modeling it, to just attending to actually participating and living it as well. From just meeting people to actually bonding with them. And from an attractional model to one that actually sends people out. So I just end with this, that our goal in this cult, Jesus culture, is to disciple mature people, firstly, who live controlled by the Spirit and the Word of God. That Word's got to be burning in them. Then secondly, they're equipped to move in all the gifts of the Spirit. They know how to flow in the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, they can share their, their faith as a lifestyle. And then fourthly, to demonstrate and activate, actively live the good news. Then reflect the life of Christ and then multiply themselves. Let me pray for you as we go away today. God, I pray that my friend will be so touched by this new wine. I pray that the, the new wine of the Spirit will just pour into them and flow through them, and that you would do something so powerful in them with this Jesus culture. Let your values live in them, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow as we talk about some of the amazing choices that we have to cement that leadership in our lives. God bless you.